I'm Amy Holden, and this is the 176th episode of ETX Rocks show featuring Ashley Lissette. This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise d- here. D- 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 Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And call me, to call me ETX Rock. <laughs> Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. <laughs> ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket change. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. As long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! Hey guys, this is Rich O'Toole, and thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Stay. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Uh, we're really, really excited about this weekend. We've had uh, like three or four interviews this weekend, so if I'm looking a little tired, that's probably why. I'm working really, really hard. Trying to bring you guys the most talented and best interviews we can from folks all across the world, not just in East Texas, not just in Texas. Uh, Today, for the first time on the ETX Rock Show, we have the lovely Miss Ashley Lissette from the DFW area, Dallas. Hi. Uh, First time on the ETX Rock Show. Yeah. Uh, And we're really excited because, um, and I don't know how much you researched me, but I've been reading a lot about you. Um, I was in the U.S. Navy, and my dad was a 20-year veteran as well. So your story really means a lot to me, and it's really an honor to get to talk to you today. Thank you. Um, and I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie, because uh, anything veteran and military based yeah. is, is just grabs my heart. Um, so let me tell you guys a little bit about Ashley. So you guys are probably wondering who the, the young gentleman is off to the off to the left, if you're looking over here. Uh, that is Paul, what is your last name? Paul Adrian. Paul Adrian, which is probably his middle name. Because <laughs> yeah. nobody wants anybody to know anybody's last name, which is why I'm Boston Chris. <laughs> but Paul had some success on uh, on The Voice. He appeared on The Voice and uh, also on America's Got Talent. And, um, and he's going to play guitar for Ashley today as well. Maybe we'll talk to him in depth at, at a later time in the future, maybe. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him on the spot. Fine. Let me tell you a little bit about Ashley, you guys. Um, Just uh, unbelievable, very young lady, but already some notable career highlights. Uh, First single co-written by Carrie Underwood. Yes. Um, I can't wait to ask her about that. That that just blows my mind. Um, The first radio release, which was that song, I understand, uh, charted on Sirius XM on the highway, and it was top 100 on media-based charts. She's open for great country artists like Jared Neiman, Joe Diffie, Tyler Farr, Brett Young, And she's also shared the stage with Sam Hunt at CMA Fest. She's also an ambassador for Folds of Honor. I can't wait to ask her about that organization because it sounds like something I'll be really interested in. Her second single, which is the current song, right? Yes. Second single co-written by Kelsey Ballerini. Carrie Underwood, then Kelsey Ballerini. I can't wait to to ask about this. And you recorded this song and then Kelsey heard it and tweeted out. Yeah, she did. She tweeted me and told me that it made her emotional and she was glad that the song found a good home, so it was really wow. exciting. very cool. Yeah. And uh, last thing, uh, you got a write-up from CMT's Cody Allen as well. Yeah, the same day that Kelsey had tweeted me, it all kind of happened in one day, and it was kind of crazy because I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. So even though she's really starting out, she's got a real, you know, young and blossoming career, you've already got all of these great accomplishments, and uh, like I said, we're really excited to talk to you. And uh, you said you brought a guitarist with you today. Yeah, I brought my brother. Oh, Lord. Hand hand. So you guys are, like, related as well. Yes. There's a lot of talent in your family. We are related. That's very cool. So tell us about what you guys are going to play for us. Um, So we're going to play two different songs. The first one we're going to do is actually going to be the Carrie Underwood co-write, which is Kill the Headlights, and that was the one that was on Sirius XM, The Highway. And then we'll play Goodbye for you guys. Okay, cool. This is Kill the Headlights by Ashley Lissette. Baby, kill the headlights. Turn the radio on We can dance all night Till the night is gone The moon can be a spotlight The only one with a front row seat We'll watch at least fireworks fly Between you and me And everything we've been looking for Every feeling we've been holding back 
so that was Kill the Headlights by Ashley Lissette. Y'all, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsor, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. This is important, so grab a pin. We are Mobile Audio and Video Productions, serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For $496, with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. Hey, I'm Monty Pittman. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. All right, and we are back uh, on the ETX Rock Show. Uh, once again, make sure you're checking out our friends at Mobile Audio and Video Production, making all of this sound and, and look amazing. Um, uh, they do all of our sneak peeks, uh, most of our episodes. And uh, honestly, without Mark Claybrook and Mobile Audio and Video Productions, there's a whole lot of this we would not be able to do. Um, so make sure you're checking them out. If you want to follow them on Facebook, it's Mobile Audio and Video Productions. On the interwebs, it's mobileaudiolabs.com. And I learned that interwebs word from Tanner Sparks. Thanks a lot, brother. Um, so we, uh, uh, we're back and we're talking with Ashley Lissette this week on the ETX Rock Show. And uh, if you follow along out there, you know how much, uh, how much passion I have for anything military, anything veteran-based. So this might be a hard one for me. Uh, but I will do my best. I guess my first question for for, for you, I would have is, um, obviously you're a, a young artist still, still kind of probably growing within your identity and stuff like that. Um, so what made you decide that this is the road you wanted to take in becoming an artist and a musician? Um, um, it all happened when I was really young. Like you said, my father was in the military, he was in the army and he was killed in action um, in January. 2007 and it was a really hard time for me you know naturally you know those first six months were really like hard and I became very like reliant on music I was just kind of listening to it every single day I had my headphones in I was always music 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 because right. it was just something that I used to heal and shortly after that I started performing you know around the DFW area and um, I went to national How old were you at this time? Uh, I was 11 at this time and then uh, I had turned 12 and I started performing, so I've been performing since I was 12, and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I just knew that it was something that I was using to cope with what had happened in my right. life because it was very, you know, it was traumatizing because of, yeah. of the circumstance. And I, after performing for years, I finally got the opportunity to go to Nashville and record, and that's kind of when I decided if there was one thing in this life that I knew that I would want to do till the day I die that I would love, the way my father loved being in the army, I knew that that was music, and ever right. since then, it just kind of became. The first thing I would like to say is I want to thank your dad for his sacrifice, um, and I want to thank you as a family for your sacrifice as well, because a lot of times out there, um, veterans will get a lot of support and a lot of thanks, and um, the, the families will not get appreciation, but the family is just as much a veteran as the veteran himself. So thank you, and thank your mom and your brother as well for, for your service to the country. Um, again, just an incredible story because here you are as an 11 year old child, you've had something just life altering happen to you. And I'm assuming your dad enjoyed your voice and, uh, you know, singing around the house and, and that kind of stuff, because I mean, there, there, it's one thing to use music as your coping mechanism, but it's another thing altogether to use that as a career choice. Right. It was. Actually, before he was deployed to Iraq for the second time, it was in November of 06. We had, like, one last Thanksgiving, like, as a huge family because he was going to leave. And he had asked that I record Don't Forget to Remember Me by wow. Carrie Underwood. And, of course, I never got to do that. So then when Kill the Headlights came around after, it was like a full circle moment when I thought there's no way that my dad yeah. didn't pull strings and make that happen right. because the connection was just 
to it was Carrie a huge influence on you yeah. as a child as oh, well? Oh, yeah, and still is. I love Carrie Underwood. Mm-hmm. I think she's phenomenal. And I remember watching her on American Idol, running up the phone bill, probably voting for her a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, she has to win. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So I, she's definitely somebody that I really look up to. And I just, I love her. Is, is that the lane you're kind of choosing for yourself? Is kind of that country with a pop sound mixed in? Or? Yeah, I mean, I've always Would you had... consider yourself country first or pop? Uh, I would definitely say country. My roots are definitely country. I mean, I grew up, my family listens to country music. Right. I mean, our family get-togethers, we would play guitar and we would sing, you know, country right. music. And so it's definitely where I lean towards. But I do have a pop influence. That's what I would categorize myself as, is country pop, for right. sure. Right, And um, I know that you've got these massive co-writes under your belt. Like, you know, I mean, carry on one, Kelsey on the other. But, I mean, are, are you kind of writing yet as well, or is yes. that something you're planning on doing? I've started writing a lot here recently because it's about time that, like, I get back to Nashville, and I really want, like, my own stuff to finally be on, like, this next chapter, or whatever this chapter is going to be. Um, so I've just been writing, even if it's just a lyric or two that I kind of get an idea, I'll immediately write it down. And, right. Um, well, I'll be in Nashville pretty soon, so it's better to have what I have and take it and then kind of make those words come alive. Right. Because, uh, I mean, I guess I have to know, I mean, as an independent artist, also a very young artist, so, I mean, you're still learning, you're still growing within yourself, still evolving. How in the world do you end up with songs uh, from Carrie and and Kelsey? I mean, there's probably, what, millions of independent artists on the planet that would kill for that. Yeah. And then to pick up these songs and not even know, yeah. You know, until after you recorded them, of, of who co-wrote them. Yeah. So, I mean, is this just, like, God's timing or serendipitous? Or? That's what I think it is. I mean, I'm just a very faithful person. I've always believed that way, and I just have always been so thankful because, like you said, like, there's millions of other people mm-hmm. that want that opportunity, and so for me to be able to have it, it was just, like, an incredible thing. Right. And so I'm just thankful every single day that I was able to these songs. And as a young artist, do you feel pressure? I mean, afterwards, you know, hey, you know, I'm performing this Carrie Underwood song. Definitely. Um, is there that pressure there to be like, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm going to have to step up my game now because, you know, if I don't do these songs justice, then I'm almost kind of wasting an opportunity. That can be a lot of pressure for a young artist. It was. When Kill the Headlights hit Sirius XM, I had never experienced, like, radio play, like, Mm-hmm. that before and you know you're on the radio you open up to the masses and people like you and some people don't and so I kind of got a taste of what that was going to be like so it was definitely it was a really good experience overall and I'm right. like so thankful for it but it definitely was really hard I didn't know I just didn't want people to like think that I didn't do a good job because right. I just knew that I really liked the song and so when I got in the studio I did everything I could to make it the best song that it could be and you're also openly shy um, for those of you out there, a lot of times we send out a questionnaire for our, our, our guests so we can get a better idea of what makes them tick before we talk to them. And she put on there, believe it or not, I'm openly shy. Very shy. Um, so, you know, as an artist and a writer now and a performer, being shy can be a huge drawback. Yeah. But I know as an artist also, as someone that's in the public eye that's an introvert, a lot of people would not know that about Boston Chris, but very introverted. I know how you can go from being sheltered mm-hmm. to being in that exposed light and just turning the volume up on, on your personality. Yeah. Is that kind of how you, you make make it happen? Yeah, totally. When I first started performing, I was, my first performance, I remember I sang a Taylor Swift song, our song, and I stood there with a the microphone, just stood there, and I was like in tears because I was so scared. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not used to like doing this because right. I'm very, I'm very introverted. I, it's really hard for me in the beginning to like really socialize and like talk to people and just go out there. But I think as I've done it more and more, I've learned to like move and work the stage and just have a whole, you know, I get up there and it's like my alter ego basically. It's yeah. like another person. It's exactly so right. It's a lot of fun for me. Yeah. And then I'm like off stage and I'm like really shy and people, I mm-hmm. guess, don't realize. And that's like, exactly <laughs> what it is. Great, great terminology. It is an alter ego. It's, a, it's almost like a different life force. Um, between who I am on camera and in public and who I am off camera and in my house. Um, And people don't realize that there could be that shy part of of us as introverts. Oh, yeah. Um, But, hey, sometimes you got to make it work for what it is. Yeah. All right, so you are actually from Texas, uh, the DFW area. 
Uh, are you playing a lot of gigs in, in the Dallas area as well, or are you focusing more on the recording side of things right um, now? Whereas I was performing a lot before, it's now become more about the recording process and, mm -hmm. like, taking trips back and forth to Nashville, because I still live here in the DFW. Um, so I will, you know, write or record anything now. It's just kind of being done out of Nashville, and then we also have a studio here that we tend to record out of as well. So I've just really tried to focus more on the recording and the songwriting you know, as I've gotten older and like this next like phase, so. Um, and do you have who? Who are some of your influences? And when I say influences, I love. I know as a writer, you should have different influences as a writer than you would as a like a performer. Mm -hmm. So who are you looking up to musically? Like musically, besides, besides Carrie Underwood. Yeah, besides <laughs> Carrie Underwood. Besides Carrie Underwood. I mean, I'm like all over the spectrum. I really love Carrie Underwood, of course, and Kelsey Ballerini is another incredible one. Her and Taylor Swift are kind of hand in hand. Right. Taylor's just an incredible artist and writer. Like, if I could write like that, I'd be like yeah. incredible. And um, she learned from a very amazing writer, Liz Rose. I don't know if yeah. you've ever heard of Liz Rose. Yes, and so yeah. I definitely draw influence from them as well. But I'm like, I like Janis Joplin, and I like you know seventies like. Rock. Like, yeah. I listen to so many different things that I have to pull ideas from everywhere. So, I'm kind of all over the place. And I've been obsessed with Julia Michaels, who writes for Selena Gomez. Mm -hmm. And she's like incredible. Yeah. Those are like probably my main people. So, that, that's cool. So, do you, do you find yourself like uh, being inspired by stuff you're listening to? Oh, yeah. You know, like you'll hear something on the radio and be like, hey, man, that's pretty cool. I can kind of introduce that into my own style. And oh, maybe yeah you know, mold it the way I, I need to. Oh, totally. And, like, listening, Mary Morris is, like, one of my favorite artists right now because she is one of those girls. She's country, but she's very soulful, and she has yes. that R&B, like, vibe to it. Yep. And so I'm, like, patiently trying to wait for her next record. I'm like, come on, like, I'm ready to hear your her, new stuff. Her newest single is dynamite. So good. Oh, my gosh. So good. So ridiculous. And she's from East Texas, yeah. believe it or not. So yeah. uh, Mary Morris is a... Incredible, incredible performer. Mm -hmm. That's a really good inspiration yeah. to have, for sure. If I could um, ever write with her, my life would be probably. Um, I think all of us feel the same <laughs> way. We just want to write with you just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, just come on, Mary. <laughs> Respond to our stuff. <laughs> that restraining order was unnecessary. Okay, so, you know, we talked about your dad a, a little bit at the open, and uh, I'm assuming um, your relationship as ambassador with Folds of Honor is. Um, maybe kind of a memorial of, of, of your dad. Yeah. Right? So tell us what Folds of Honor is and what it means to be an ambassador for that. So Folds of Honor is just, it's a military-based organization. It provides, like, educational use for kids that when they want to go to college, they provide, like, the funds for kids to be able to further their education. Because, of course, you know, you have a parent or somebody passed away, it's a little bit harder and it's kind of down to one income. So they have different types of scholarships that they allow these now awesome. kids to use yeah. and so that came about you know through other people in Nashville and I think just for me being an ambassador is important because I am one of those people you know I lost a father and I can relate to these people and I want to say hey like there is healing after tragedy you know that was a really dark time in my life and I still struggle to this day but I use music in my foundation to kind of further that and just say hey like if I can do it you can do it Right. And I think school is a big part of, you know, just life. I think allowing somebody to further their education is incredible because that's the one thing somebody can ever take from you is their education. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done a few events with Folds of Honor. I've sang the anthem. I've gotten to go to, like, Chicago and Oklahoma. And it's, like, always been an incredible experience meeting other people that are, they relate to you in a sense because yeah. we've all lost somebody. Or, you know, they're just people that really care about the military and, they're all about getting the word out there. So wow. it's an incredible organization. So everybody should visit foldswanner.org. Yeah, and we'll yeah. Put, definitely put that yeah. in the description down below definitely. so you guys check that out. And uh, we'll link it up so you guys just have to click on it and it'll take you right there. Yeah. Um, I, I want to thank you for your courage um, because uh, I lost my dad in 2013. Um, so I know your Sorry. pain. Um, he was a Vietnam era veteran, but he was um, affected by Agent Orange, which was a, a chemical they used to kill the jungle in Vietnam. And uh, he struggled with illness for the 40 some odd years since he left Vietnam. So I know how much courage it takes to kind of relive that loss over and over again. 
just because you want people to be affected by it, because you want to help with your platform. Right, you know, it's my um, story, and yeah. I, can't, I can't steer myself away from my story. That's the platform I've used because it's so important to me. And I like to remember my dad every single day the way that he was. So. Right. You know, I and that's it. awesome. <laughs> and that takes a whole lot of courage, though, uh, to be willing to talk about it over and over and over and over again. Reliving that trauma is hard. I know it is. Um, like you, I think about my dad every single night before I lay down and go to bed. Yeah. So it never leaves you. It never, ever leaves you. Yeah. Um, so t to take that horrible situation and turn it into a platform with folds of honor where you're trying to help people that are dealing with the same loss that, that you've dealt with, I see a huge amount of courage and I have a lot of respect for you. you. All right, so if you're following along with the ETX Rock Show, you guys know that we love to play games with our guests here on the ETX Rock Show. And um, as I've said before on the show, every single artist we have on the show, we send them an email and we say to every single one, Check out an episode or two at this link or this link. That email was sent to Ashley Lissette, wasn't it? It was. Like okay, so here's what we're going to do with Ashley, because this is always a I'm surprise saying. to the artists. Uh, we are going to play What the Heck with Ashley Lissette. What the heck? Yes, that's what we're playing. And here's how this game works. I'm going to ask you 10 questions okay. that have no meaning whatsoever. Oh, some of them are funny. Some of them make zero sense. And you have to tell me the very first thing that pops into your brain. Okay. So brain out the mouth. No filter, no thinking about it. I ask the question, you think it, you say it. Okay. Can you do that? Okay. This is what the heck with Ashley Lissette. Number one, isn't hitting the snooze button on your alarm clock just reliving the worst Hell part yeah. of your day over and over and over yes. again? Yes. So yes. why do we do that? Oh my God. Because we're lazy. Maybe, I wouldn't say lazy. It could just be because we're tired, right? I guess. <laughs> All right, number two of what the heck with Ashley Lissette. Where do squirrels go during hurricanes? I have no idea. Why not? They, got, they must go somewhere, right? I mean, I've have you ever been so. in, uh, away like, from me because I don't like squirrels. Oh, you don't like squirrels? No. How could you not like squirrels? I don't like squirrels. Why? No, I don't like squirrels. Okay, so have you ever been in a hurricane? No. Me either. Well, I have. Texas. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. I've been in a hurricane. I've never seen squirrels like flying through an air or anything. And you would <laughs> assume that because they live in trees and stuff that you just see them everywhere. Well, that's true, windy. because like in Twister, that cow flew around. Right, <laughs> it's perfect like, example. <laughs> so where do they go during the hurricanes? Because you never see them flying through the air. They're probably hanging out in your house. I don't know. Okay. Um, so if you have a hurricane near you, check your house check for Check your squirrels. attic for some squirrels. They might be hanging out there. They're probably just as scared as we are. I would be. Terrifying. Oh my right. God. That was only number two, Ashley. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so number three. Okay. We are known to say heavens no, and we are known to say hell yeah as people, right? Yeah. Heavens no, hell yeah. Why isn't there a purgatory, perhaps? <laughs> what? I have no idea. I don't even... I'm more like... Well, you're a performer, right? right? So you might be on stage and you might be saying, you might say, if you're having a good time, give me a hell yeah. Yeah, see, I'm more on the hell yeah spectrum. Okay, so why don't we ask them to say purgatory perhaps instead? Because that is weird. Why would you want to say that? I can't even... Purgatory. You would be, but you'd be different. That's true. I would stand out. So next show you see me, purgatory perhaps. Eventually, I'm going to get an artist to stand by those words. Hashtag purgatory, perhaps. On That's Twitter. right. Per <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number four. All right, so Donald Duck. Are you familiar with yes. Donald Duck? Yes. All right, have you ever seen Donald Duck wear pants? No. Okay, so why does he wear a towel when he gets out of the shower? Oh, my God. He's ruining my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I don't know. That's really weird that he would wear a towel but not wear pants. Never wears pants. Makes no sense. Ever. But if you, every time I've ever seen Donald Duck shower, he's got a towel on when he gets out. Maybe he's just trying to dry off. That's what towels are for. <laughs> but we don't wear a towel around us to dry off, Ashley. We do that to cover, you know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he just wants to fly away. I don't know. 
It's a cave. And then wrap a towel around wrap himself. Wrap a towel, and then because ducks, would be able ducks to fly can't away. really fly very far. I've never seen a duck flying with a towel on him. Yeah, that would be interesting. Could you imagine what that would look like? It'd be a whole different, like, National Geographic It show. would really change my life and the way I view Donald Duck in general, and especially at Six Flags. So, so next time I see him, I'm going to be like, why don't you have a towel on? Four questions, squirrels, ducks, purgatory, perhaps. Hashtag. Hashtag it all. All right, right. number five. Okay. Theoretically, let's say you're a cannibal. Okay. All right. Do you think that clowns would taste funny? <laughs> I think clowns would taste awful because I hate clowns. That's the one thing I don't like. And my brother's over here laughing, but he is terrified of clowns, especially it. He hates the movie. So But if you're a cannibal and you hate clowns, wouldn't that be like proper vengeance against the clown? To to eat eat a clown? Them? Yes. So and then would I would it? probably throw it up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a bulimic cannibal. Who knew? <laughs> no, I'd probably just throw it because it's gross. All right. Just but because it's gross, not But if you're a cannibal, it's not gross. I don't know. I just, that's a weird question. <laughs> All right, number six. <laughs> number six. What do you think cats dream about? I don't know, and I don't care because I don't like cats. <laughs> you don't like squirrels, you don't like I don't cats. like animals. I care about animals, but I'm not an animal person. Like, this segment think, of... It's um, over. <laughs> this segment of What the Heck with Ashley Lissette is brought to you by the World Wildlife Fund. No, um, if I had to think about what cats would dream about, I mean, I don't know. Like, I wonder what my dog dreams about, too. Okay, so what does your dog dream about? I have no idea, but he dreams. Radio play? <gasps> Maybe. Maybe you should write a song about your dog. I love my dog. I'm down to write a song about my dog. What's your dog's name? Titan. There you go. Hashtag Titan, Titan, yeah, on Twitter. Hashtag <laughs> Titan Purgatory, perhaps, on Twitter. Write a song about my dog. That's right. Yes. Number seven. All right, let me think of a good one. Number seven. All right, so you you hire an exorcist because you've been demon possessed. Yes. Okay. So you hire the exorcist. The exorcist does his job. You don't pay the exorcist. Does that mean you get repossessed? Probably. <laughs> I'm gonna assume so. I think probably. I would think that he would turn around and be like, actually, you know what? You can have it back. Yeah, because, you know, you didn't pay me. So right. here, have your demon so back. So have your demon back because I don't want it. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. That's what I would think. All right, so number seven. Um, do you think pyromaniacs wear blazers? Mm, I mean, no, but it would seem fitting considering. Fitting. The situation. Punch. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> right. That's going to be the title to this episode. Ashley Lissette. Pun intended. Pun intended with Ashley Lissette. Yeah. I like it. All right. Number eight. Um, okay. So if evolution was true, okay. how did sloths make the cut? I don't know, but I like sloths, so we're not going to talk about sloths. Finally! <laughs> An animal she likes. Wait a minute. I'm so sloths confused because cats with... and squirrels are so much cooler than sloths. I mean, sloths just kind of go at their own pace and mind their own business. and that They don't just... have a choice. Exactly, but I just wish that we were all like sloths. Did you know sloth suicide is a thing? Yeah, I can see why. It's really sad. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sloth. It's a sloth. I don't want anything. Oh, she's I don't want playing people. this way too well. Yeah, she's suicide. I don't like that. Don't kill yourselves, animals or people. Think about like it, it, Sloth. Think about it. Please don't. All right, I so you. <laughs> please don't. Seriously, though. Uh, apparently, that really is a thing, though. That's confusing. All right, number nine. We're almost there. Oh, my God. Okay, so if a parsley farmer loses a lawsuit. A right? parsley farmer, okay. Do they garnish his wages? I mean, yes, we can garnish his wig, just sprinkle it across my pizza. Yeah. Parsley pizza? I like parsley, so <laughs> I'm not opposed. Wait a minute. What are they doing out there in Dallas? I don't want to know. <laughs> we have way too much out in Dallas. Apparently so. All right. Number 10. Yeah, I'm going to do it, y'all. All right, so they say that four out of five people suffer from diarrhea. 
right? Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the fifth person enjoys it? I mean, yeah, probably, because people on strange addiction, there's some of them that have an addiction to going on. Think it has anything to do with the parsley? Maybe, but not for me. (laughs) 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 Just going to pull myself right back out of that. Oh, no, she She didn't. She said she likes parsley pizza. Well, I had no choice. But that's not what you said. You said you liked parsley pizza. I'm uncomfortable. Parsley pizza and sloths over cats and and. Uh, I like sloths. <laughs> All right, y'all. That was what the heck with Ashley was said. Um, I don't think it counts because she said what the heck before we actually started playing, but never said it during the game. So unfortunately, <gasps> I, I could have said it the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this game. She loved it. <laughs> She showed me off camera while we were filming this on camera. <laughs> so that was what the heck with Ashley was saying. You did great. That Thank you fun. for playing. Thank you. All right, Ashley, so uh, it was great talking to you uh, this week on the ETX Rock Show. T- uh, I understand you guys are going to play us another song. We are. And you, got, and you said earlier in the show it's called Goodbye. It is Tell called Goodbye. Tell us about Goodbye. the song. So Goodbye is kind of a song that, like, I the minute I heard the demo, I was like, I have to record this song because I thought it was so incredibly relatable, especially for somebody my age. You know, we all go through phases and we date people and things end. And it can even be like friendships where just things, they end and it's a good goodbye. And I like that it was very sweetly said and it wasn't like kind of angsty, you know, right. um, which is normally the kind of song that I go for. Right. But um, because when I heard, of your age? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It has to be. But I think with this song, it was just, I loved it from beginning to end. And I just, I related to it so much at the time that I was like, we're recording this song. And then um, later on, I found out that Kelsey Ballerini was a co-write. So I actually had no idea until after I wow. already recorded, like, the final. We had already had the master. We were ready. We were getting ready to, like, release it to radio. And I was like, oh, by the way, Kelsey Ballerini is a girl on the demo. So that yeah. didn't blow your mind much, right? Um... It's just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it totally blew my mind. So uh, do you think maybe that was, uh, I know I shouldn't be asking questions uh, this late in the game, but um, do you think that maybe helped you in the recording process, not knowing who wrote the song? I think it did. I mean, because even with Kill the Headlights, we found out later on that Carrie had been a co-write on it. And I think it just makes it a little bit easier. I probably would have been a whole lot more nervous had I known yeah, that their names I were attached to it. To I'd be like, how am I even going to live up to this? Right. But I think it made it easier, and then we found out at the end. And then yeah. I love both the songs so much. So Very cool. Yeah. All right, so guys, check this out. This is called Goodbye by Ashley Lissette.
goodbye um, by Ashley Lissette, and Paul has disappeared. I don't it's know what happened. Amazing. They yeah. took him, the ghost. I think there's a hurricane coming, and he went to the same place the squirrels yeah, went. Yeah, he went to hide with the squirrels, <laughs> yeah. wherever they are. I think they're stuck to the <laughs> parcel like the pizza. That's what I think Or hanging are. out with my pet sloth. Wait, now you have a pet sloth? Very In cool. another world, I do. All right, so tell us a little bit about uh, where folks can follow along with you, your social media. I know you have a, a really cool website and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So AshleyLisette.com is basically where you can get to everything. If you can okay. get to AshleyLisette.com, you can get to my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, which, again, they're all at AshleyLisette. And, yeah, come follow me. I like and I'm going to spell that out for folks because it's a little bit different. It's A-S-H-L-I-E-G-H-L-I-S-S-E-T. Yes. Com. Good job. I did that without looking. High five. Yes. I did my homework. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, y'all can come hang out with me. I like to be a lot. The webpage is at the best place for like if there's a venue or something out there that to wants to book you. contact through the website. Yeah, yeah on the contact just page. Just through there. But we filter through that pretty much every single day. Okay. So. And it's Ashley Lissette on Instagram, um, Twitter, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook. You got a Snapchat yeah. or anything? Like no Snapchat. Smart girl. No Snapchat. She's very smart. I do Instagram stories. And. Well, that's the, almost the same thing, but yeah. Instagram is cooler, I think, than Snapchat. But again, I'm 40 years old. So I like Instagram stories more than Snapchat. I'm with you on that. Right. Have and and you got these two amazing singles. Are are they available for download? They are um, on iTunes. Okay. And you can stream them on Spotify and Apple Music. Um, they're available on Google Play and Amazon, too. Okay, awesome. They're everywhere. And I guess the question that most people would want to know is, you've got these two amazing singles out. And you must be working on getting this stuff recorded so we can have physical CDs. So what, what's the plan? When are you hoping to have all that available for folks? Well, I'm like, like I said, I'm entering like this new phase. Like I'm growing up now and I've had a lot of time to reflect. So I'm definitely recording and writing. But if I put together like an EP or an album, it probably won't be until like early next year. Okay. So this kind of remaining part of the year is solely like music and recording and finding out which songs are the best fit okay. to put out to everybody but I'm like ready for it I'm like excited yeah so very cool so be looking for that um uh follow along with her because I'm sure you know as soon as she knows everybody uh, that's a fan of hers will also know hopefully early 2018 maybe we'll have some new music from Ashley Yay. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody out there for tuning in to another amazing episode of the ETX Rock Show. It was a huge honor to talk with you today, thank Ashley. You so again, I want to me. thank you for your courage and your family's service uh, to the United States of America. Thank you for having me. This was fun. And I'm going to play What the Heck with other people now. Very cool, very cool. I'll send everybody. you over a list yes. of our questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, yeah, What the Heck was really, really fun with Ashley. Make sure you're following along with Ashley. She's going to make a, a, a huge name for herself. Um, the first two songs are incredible. There's more where that came from, I promise you. Um, if you're hearing about the ETS Rock Show for the first time, you guys can follow along with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're located at ETS Rocks. Um, tuned in app. Finally, we're on Tuned In, um, the go-to place for internet radio stations all across the planet. You guys can go on there and search for ETX Rocks, and, and we'll pop up. You can watch 170-some-odd episodes, binge-watch like Netflix, save some money. Yes. Right? Netflix or ETX Rocks? ETX Rocks is free. Yeah, ETX Rocks is free. We're going to start hashtag ETX Rocks and chill. Yes. I will do it today, actually. I will Really? Out. Well, so we're going to start that today. So 100, this is episode number 176 of the ETX Rock Show. If you're listening on iTunes, please, please rate and review us. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Wherever you are, hit the subscribe or follow or like button. And we thank you all for listening. Um, as we always say on this show, we want to thank you guys out there for supporting live music. And don't ever forget. ETX Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris, Zaren Watson, ETX Rocks, ETX Rocks, Alan Fox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made in the whole history. Hi, this is Paul Bebo, and I'm ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're gonna love it. ETX Rocks. Hey, it's Texas. DP here. ETX Rock. Hey, it's Texas. We're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. Jaden Farmer.
Barnes with ETX Rocks. Hey everybody, I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. To the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi, East Texas. This is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East Texas. We're Lady Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember... ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from the ETX Rocks with Boston Prince. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks. And remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX Rocks. Hello. 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 Well, Always remember, ETX Rocks! Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hi, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy, ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texarkana down to the coast and Dallas down to Houston and everything in between, we are ETX Ross! Hit the brakes! Check, check.